Freedom in gaming is a difficult thing to cultivate, to allow for a variety of interactions, scenarios, and opportunities so that the players may choose their own way to play. With many complex systems and objects in flux, it's an ambitious goal to account for freedom in a game. Many games convey freedom in different ways, such as the freedom of exploration in The Legend of Zelda, the freedom of storytelling in Baldur's Gate, and the freedom of murder in Hitman. There is no wrong way to kill a target in Hitman, just as long as they're left limp and cold or burning to the touch. You can go in loud and guns blazing just to narrowly evade deaths, or you can stealthily manipulate your surroundings and not even breathe the same air as your target. You can play this game like a genocidal sociopath or a distorted pacifist. You decide how a person should die, but not whether if they should die. For as fun as it is to kill these people, is it truly necessary for them to die? Are they so beyond redemption and atonement that death is the only proper judgment? For what justification is there for Agent 47 and the ICA or International Contract Agency to kill all these people? And is there really an ethical path in this game of murder? Obviously morals are the least of concerns when it comes to a game about killing people. Complaining about murder in a game like Hitman is like complaining about a hole in a bagel. But the game does have its own morals and incentivizes you to play a certain way while allowing for a variety of playstyles. Let's explore the Essex of Hitman World of Assassination. So what reason is there for the ICA to kill everyone? What justification is made? What moral reason is there for the agency to exist? Turns out there isn't really much of a reason at all other than money. The only mantra is listed in their logo. Mercedes Letifer, or Lethal Trade. When diplomatic methods don't work, you can call in the ICA. They're mostly amoral. There is no overriding rule to abide by. Being purely pragmatic, the ICA is aware that things happen in the field. Plans go awry. Civilians get caught in the crossfire. Oh no. The ICA would even tolerate the deaths of many civilians, just as long as their target is dead and their involvement unknown. Kind of like a lot of countries, except they don't care about that last part. However, there are limits. The ICA won't just kill anyone. Like Switzerland, the ICA hopes to maintain its neutrality, to serve as I mean, customers of all sides, even whole governments. Therefore, the ICA wouldn't accept jobs that could destabilize a whole country, anything that would threaten their other patrons. Which might be why South Korea isn't in the game, as any damage done to the Chevel would bring down the entire country. If anything, they would gladly accept offers that would threaten governments, such as stuffing out a coup in Morocco. For as globally neutral as they want to be, the ICA is severely flawed, but not in the incompetent UN sort of way. They only service the rich and powerful and kill people for their client's benefit, or vengeance. And since they don't ask much, they're susceptible to being manipulated by a shadow client pulling the strings behind a series of requests, or a secret society maintaining its wealth and power. 47 is not too different himself as he also kills his targets with no questions asked. He gets rewarded a hefty sum, enough to buy this fancy house and his collection of suits. And 47's reason for being a hitman is because there's nothing else for him. This is all he knows, and this is what he is best at. So, is the game completely devoid of morals, letting you just kill anyone and everyone? No. While the fictional ICA is amoral, the developers IO Interactive are not. IOI encourages you to only kill the target and minimize collateral damage. Do so and you'll receive a hefty XP bonus which can help unlock more items to aid in your murder quest. And if you're up for the challenge, you can go for becoming a silent assassin, which is oddly the most ethical of assassins. It's where you kill all the targets unnoticed, whether through a freak accident or a mysterious disappearance, where the hands of an assassin would not even be considered for the cause of death. And you'll have little qualms about killing these people as IOI assures you in each briefing that these affluent quarries just so happen to be criminals of the highest degree. 
I don't know, seems kind of unrealistic that so many rich and powerful people would engage in criminal activity without consequence. Like, that's a crazy coincidence. You mean to tell me that if people had a great amount of power and did things with little consequence, they would behave in amoral ways? <sighs> Couldn't be me. Killing the main targets provides little guilt, but killing others is discouraged. The game doesn't end immediately if a non-target is killed, but a stern notification in red text does appear, indicating a no-no. Killing a non-target, including guards, penalizes some points from the total high score. However, if you're courteous enough to give a guard a swift death by a bullet through the brain, then 25 experience points are awarded. This seems contradictory, so what does this mean? Well, for Agent 47, nothing, but for the player, two separate things. Points are unrelated to XP and represents the high score a player has, which can be compared on the leaderboards. This is purely intrinsic motivation, as getting a high or low score does not affect the game. Getting XP fills up your XP meter, which is exclusively used to attain the fish, the deadliest tool in any assassin's arsenal. And you could get some other stuff too as a nice little bonus, like this gun or whatever. You gain a meager amount of XP for killing guards in specific ways, but it is generally more rewarding to refrain from killing non-targets. So while IOI allows you to kill non-targets in their game, they will never encourage that behavior. Except for when they do. The final level in the Hitman trilogy is one of my favorites because it allows you to become EVIL HITMAN. You're allowed, and even incentivized, to kill every single person aboard this train. They are all culpable and aware of their participation in supporting the evil ICA, which you also work for. You make it to the end and confront the man behind everything. Knowing just who you are, he nonchalantly waits for his punishment. And the best part? You could spare him. Look, this cycle of vengeance gotta end somewhere. Everyone deserves a second chance. Starting now. It's the complete inverse of a Hitman mission, but of course it's based on the way you play. Obviously, you can play this mission without killing anyone as well. Hitman is broad enough to where you can play the entire game as pugnaciously and as peacefully as you would like. You can try to kill everyone in every level, but doing that would bring a SWAT team to your house faster than you can say no Russian. And you could also try to play every level without killing anyone, at least not directly. The targets still have to die, but you can allow them to die rather than outright slay them. Right, I just so happen to be a little quirky and loosen this railing, but it's not like I forced the target to lean on it. Or I just so happen to drop this banana near this grave, I didn't force the target to slip on it. You can even have other people murder targets for you. The game is flexible enough to where you can stage many accidents. But there then come many issues with attempting to have every target die like this. The potential is there, but proving that theory would be a task worthy of its own video that I'm sure someone has already made. But not everyone can be an angel playing this game. If anything, this game feels like a sociopath simulator. Or more accurately, an antisocial personality disorder simulator. And antisocial doesn't mean, oh, I'm too scared to talk to people. No, antisocial means you're anti-people. In this game, the obtrusive dots win every time. Did you know that Sierra knocks her? Hey. Oh, so that's what that does. Anyway, those with ASPD are sometimes impulsive, manipulative, aggressive, and remorseless. You can become the walking embodiment of chaos like Anton in No Country for Old Men. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Of course, not all with ASPD or like Agent 47, certainly not as skilled as him. This behavior is reinforced in a way that there are little to no consequences. 
you can always load another save if something wrong happens or if you die. Perhaps players won't behave like maniacs if there were some real consequences, like in Freelancer mode. Freelancer is a roguelite mode in Hitman where a series of random targets must be killed in order to complete a campaign. If you die, you lose all of your equipment and all of your progress, so the stakes are extremely high with each mission. Therefore, you do whatever it takes to not die. Morals go out the window in Freelancer. It's Hitman at its most pragmatic. You'll truly see what can go wrong and you'll have to live with its consequence. A tip I learned is that whenever something goes wrong, just put on Freebird and let the music take over. There are also bonus objectives in Freelancer that award you money for completing them. These man coins are exclusively used to fuel the thrill of gambling in the stock market. And they can be used to buy more equipment, but where's the fun in that? With some objectives, you're even incentivized to kill non-targets, like killing guards or having collateral accident kills. Killing guards won't penalize anything, but killing civilians will. Although, many of these objectives outweigh the costs anyways. Therefore, firmer consequences still cause the player to behave in immoral ways. They have less of a choice, less control, and more consequences, so killing others is a way to escape those consequences. Clearly Hitman is not about behaving morally, it's about murder and pulling off the perfect execution. It's just interesting how IOI motivates moral behavior while providing the player with great freedom. How all of these targets are generally corrupt individuals that evaded justice, and the only way to provide that justice is through corrupt means. And that only the guilty should be punished, not civilians, nor even guards. These guys are just doing their jobs and aren't culpable except for the guys that definitely know what they're doing, like members of the cartel. As a way to harbor player freedom, IOI encourages relatively ethical behavior through positive reinforcement rather than punishment. So you are not forced to play a certain way. You are free to play any way you want, ethical or not. With the most skillful of assassins being the most furtive and ironically, the most ethical. Of course, in the end, murder is still unethical and definitely not funny. Don't laugh at that. Hey, can I set up an appointment for an ASPD diagnosis? No reason. No, I meant I have no sense of reason.